Hi there. We're back again and we're going to iron the strip set. So I have my iron set for cotton and I have my ironing surface here. First thing I'm going to do is just gently press these in one direction. This is not, I'm going to, um, this is just generally getting things going in the right direction so that I don't have to struggle with it when I press this from the front. Make sure you get the edges. Okay. Now it's all just generally going in the right direction. Now, so I, like I said before, I use Best Press. You can use Magic Sizing. You can do, I just suggest that you use something because I found that if I have to take a break in my work or if it's very humid, sometimes the, uh, the creases will relax a little bit and I just want to make sure that everything is pressed in one direction. The sizing and the best press keep holds that seam a little better, holds that edge. So I'm not going to iron this way. I'm actually going to push sort of like that because I want to see how just gently, gently, gently it's pushing the seams out in the direction we just initially pressed them. And I'm not, there we go, I'm not straining against this, I'm just gently, gently pushing the seam towards the other side, just to completely flatten it out and open it up. All the seams, I'm not opening the seams, that is counterproductive in this. We're going to have all the seam allowances going in either one direction or the other direction. So here it's just, everything is... All the edges are all pressed out. There's no, whoa, here's a little spot that needs a little more. Okay, so here we are. Now, proof is in the measurement here. So I'm going to move my little ironing pad and lay this out on my cutting mat. Okay, so here we are. The far edge, the red, pin dot is resting on a line on my cutting mat and I've just smoothed this out and you can see that this edge, the cherry pin dot, is lining up directly on a line as well. They're both parallel. It means my pieces haven't skewed when I was pressing them or when I was sewing them. They're nice and parallel on either side. This is really important because if you were pressing this way with a point or hard against the edge of the seam, you can have skewed those edges. And remember, we have to cross cut these in two inch sections. We want to make sure that this is actually going to work for us. Okay, so we're talking about reducing bulk in our piecing when we press. Okay, so this is a standard four patch. Making the four patch, we would have taken, sewn our two strips together and pressed, gently pressed from the light to the dark side. Okay, cut the sections, sewed them together. Now, standard would be to press the seam allowances in one direction or the other direction. But that leaves us with a thickness of about eight thicknesses in the center and just two or three around it. So what I want you to do is break those rules and press all in the same direction. We already have the two white ones, white seam allowances going in one direction. So let's press the red going with it, all in a spiral. And when the center, you'll see will open up and you get a little four patch in the middle. This completely reduces all the bulk. The most we have in any thickness here is just four thicknesses on any of these. We already have three thicknesses on these seam allowances. The center now is only four at any point. So it lays almost perfectly flat. To sew this into a triangle, I already have all my seam allowances folded. My white seam allowances are folded under 
the red for my half squares. Fold it under, fold it under, fold it under. What I'm going to do in the middle is now press all of these, press my reds in the same direction as the whites. Okay? My dark fabric is going to the light side here. But you'll find when you open it up to the back, you actually now get a little pinwheel. Can you see a little pinwheel in the center? That's double the thickness of my four patch. Double the thickness, and yet it is now almost completely flat. I could sew across this and not have a great raised lump where my needle starts going through little tiny stitches or it's rubbing the underside of my free motion foot. So yes, the seam allowances, the dark fabric is on top of the light, but it's flat. As long as I don't have a thin white cotton in here or a thinner light fabric, this is not going to be an issue. Where things don't work quite so well, I get the same little four patch in my quarter squares. But if I were to go and sew my quarter squares together like that, I'm going to get, I'll get a problem in the corners when I go to sew these. Because you have to think when you're making a, when you're making a quarter square triangle, we make a half square, we join them together, we sew them again. We're getting mirror images here. These, the seam allowances on this side, twist in a different direction than the seam allowances on this side. This one's going to go this way, this one will go this way. Okay, so when I get to the corners, I can't necessarily, if I join these, I can't necessarily have them, my seams going in different directions. Okay, my seam allowances here are going to land, no matter what I do, they'll land on top of each other. So I'll sew those, I'll sew my strips together, and then make a decision whether I need to press that open. Sometimes you just don't have a choice. Talking about reducing bulk again. So this is a series of quarter squares and some strips. It's one of our blocks of the month for next year. And on the back, you can see I've done my little um, quarter squares and folded the seams open, nice and neat. Everything else folded in different directions, but all my quarter squares had that nice, neat little flat piece in the end. Where I couldn't successfully reduce the bulk is here in the corners where the different patches meet. There's no way to plan to have everything go in the direction that you want. Um, I had a lot of bulk coming in on this side, a lot of bulk coming in on that side. So in this case, in order to make this flat lay better, I ironed the seams open. I pressed them open here. And the block then is almost completely flat. You can see the block sits very flat, nice and neat. So this is one of those cases where you do need to press things open because at this point I can run my hands across it. I can't feel any high spots on it. That's a good thing because this is going to have free motion quilting at the end. This is a similar instance over here. This is the border of our block of the month for next year. My little pinwheel block here. And you can see this is a very simple border on here and I was working with linen fabric for mine so this in here in this top section this is all linen um, when I turn it over you can see this lays flat but what you can see the machinations on the back of how this was pressed um, you can see here that there's a lot of bulk in all of these scenes we had bulk here quite a bit right here where the linen was folding over to meet the other patchwork. Every one of these high points on this side, where it was meeting patchwork, I pressed the seam open until I got to that thick spot. The sixth thick spot, I just let it stay flat in one direction. Pressed it open again, 
until I got to the next thick spot and press that in one direction. I didn't have a problem on this side because this was just going in against a solid strip. So all of these, this whole piece could be pressed to the side where there's least resistance, but not on the other side. Not where it was this high point was meeting all of this bulk from the blocks. So here I literally opened the seams, closed them up, open the seams, close them up. And this way, it's laying as flat as it can be. There's really, again, no high points on this one either. It really laid down very well. So sometimes you just have to be creative. There's no way to completely plan a quilt. 